It's winter time, and you know what that means. Melody, what are you going to teach us today? I am going to paint a winter scene with a palette knife and just a palette knife. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. Okay, so just a palette knife, no brush, nothing else. And, and is that what you normally do? You just only use a palette knife? Yeah, so I do both. But for this painting, um, a lot of them, I'll just use a palette knife. I'll sketch with a brush first, and then I'll just skip to it, use a palette knife. And also sometimes I pick up some of these shaper tools to pick up paint. So the palette knife for applying paint and then some shaper tools to pick up. And it gives oh, great be marks and energy. I've yeah. I've just put the reference photo up so people can see what we're going to paint. And you actually went outdoors and, and did this yeah. originally. So we're going to get to learn from you. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started with it. Okay. So I, um, I'll i switch to the image here that I'm going to do. I went ahead and sketched out, um, just stained the canvas and sketched out with just some dark purple paint my darks and lights so uh, wait wait wait, wait. i've got questions like, i'm the translator yeah. here you what you said you what'd you do to the canvas you toned it i toned the canvas with a warm tone and um i often do that and i will change up the color but i wanted some light coming through so i will take a warm tone this is like a little bit of alizarin crimson and orange and i'll use just a little gamosol and stain the canvas and that i do with a brush and All then right. I use that to act as the background. And now, do you, you wait till that's dry? Yeah, um, not no. When I'm outside, I decide on the stain while I'm outside on location, and so it's not totally dry. In the winter, sometimes that can be a problem. So, uh, you know, it is good to wait a few minutes. But I do it right on location normally, and then I jump into my sketch. It's a very little paint in the background here. It's thin. And so it, you can go right over it with a dark color. Okay. So now I want to talk about your sketch. You did the sketch with the palette knife. I did the sketch with a, with a brush and now I use the palette knife. So the only time that I use the brush is for the sketch. And then I jump with the palette knife and kind of fill it in. So this is for me kind of to see where I'm going with the painting and uh, to have those lights and dark. So it's almost like a sketch in the sketchbook and I would do a sketch in my sketchbook first small a thumbnail and then I would jump to this step so this is the only time I will use a brush and the rest will be with the palette knife okay well I am anxious yeah. to see you do this and so what we'll do is we'll get the show officially started and then come back and watch you get that goopy thick paint with the palette knife awesome I'm getting ready so All I'll right. be ready to go. Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Welcome to Art School Live, where you get art lessons from professional artists every weekday at noon. And we believe anybody can learn to paint and draw. And if you don't believe it yourself, just watch. You're going to be doing it before you know it. We've taught thousands and thousands and thousands of artists all over the world, and we can teach you too. The biggest problem is that everybody believes that you need natural talent, and you don't. You need a process. And if you learn from people like our guest today, Melanie, you're going to be blown away. She is a specialist in landscape painting with palette knife. She's a gallery owner. She has a lot to teach you today. And so, Make sure you go into the chat, tell us where you're watching from. And what I'd love for you to do is whenever you see an aha moment, a lesson, and just as if you were taking notes, type it into the chat. So like if she tells you something that you want to remember, like she toned the canvas or whatever. Melody is an incredible painter, and I'll show you some of her work. It has such rich color and energy to see them in person. Uh, I have had the pleasure of meeting Melanie, being to her home, being a guest at her home, being, being to her gallery. She's a fabulous person, a lot of fun to be around, and she's got uh, great teaching skills. And so we're going to learn a lot from her today. We have prizes for you. If you are watching what we want, well, of course you're watching. <laughs> what we want you to do is leave a comment right now, every single person watching, because if you put a comment in, you are automatically entered to win 
a prize. And today's prize is uh, value specs, which help you see values, to help you see the darks and light, because that's part of the key of painting. And you can win them. Uh, we will just pick from the comments, both on replay and live. So make sure that you do that. The winner of the last prize, which was Plein Air Magazine, is Diana Carmichael in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. All right, Diana. And we have a free gift for you. Plein air painting is so much fun going outdoors. We'll talk about that. Uh, 201 Essential Plein Air Tips. Master the art of outdoor painting. And we've got all these great artists in it. And uh, you just get it for free. Outdoorpainter.com slash ebook. And we'll also put that uh, in the comments so that you know how to get it. All right. And last but not least, we hope you'll subscribe to this program. We're here every weekday at 12 noon. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. And now we're also on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, not Twitter anymore, X. And so uh, follow us wherever you are and give me a follow on my Instagram at Eric Rhodes too. But go to YouTube and get that subscription done. That's really, really important. Okay. All right. Now back to Melanie. Melanie, take it away. Hi there. So I'm going to jump right in because I mixed some color in advance. When you have snow, you are not going to just use your white paint. Actually, not at all. You're going to have light and shadow. These are some of my shadow colors that I uh, mixed in advance because we don't really have time for me to show you all, but I use a limited palette of paint and I mix these beautiful shadow colors. And then I have some lights for the snow too. And these here are my light colors. So I've mixed little bits of yellow and orange and mixes of those um, alizarin for pinks uh, into my whites to get some really nice snow colors. So don't just use white paint alone to paint snow. You want to, uh, you want to use some color. So I'm going to start, I have this winter path that I just sketched out and um, I'm going to start with my palette knife. And I like to build up paint and I'm going to use this. You can see the sketch here. I have um, my dark. So it kind of gives me a roadmap to follow and I can use this for putting in my shadows first. So I, I'm starting those, with those don't look as shadows. dark. They don't look as dark as your darks there. Why not? So I don't want to go that dark because the shadows are, are not that dark. They will get darker as you go. But if you, if I go too dark, it is still on the ground. It is, um, you know, a shadow, but it's not going to be dark, dark. Um, it's I like to paint the, outside. Yeah, it's reflecting. Yeah, it's reflecting, yeah. exactly. And I like to paint what I see outside. So this is actually uh, a redo from being outside on this great path that we walk on. And when I was walking on this path with my husband and dog, I saw these these shadows coming across. And I said, I'm going to come back here and paint in the winter. So I did. And I bundle up. I stand on a, a mat until my feet don't get cold. And I uh, I, I did this painting originally outside. Now That's I can the come trick. Back That's the, the trick to painting yeah. in snow is to get the car mat out and lay it down yep. so that your, yep. your feet don't get cold. Yes, exactly. And that is really important. And then hand warmers and foot warmers and lots and lots of layers because you're standing still. Does your paint and, get uh, stiffer? It does. So I've been mixing in a solvent-free gel by Gamblin um, in with my paints to uh, give them a little more fluid quality because they do get super, they get a little stiff in the cold. So so I am, um, I am changing this up a little. I'm not using all the same, uh, the same color here. I have little bits more of, of reds in them or blues. I don't want it all the same. So I'm laying it in kind of different. And this is just the first pass. So I'll go back to this after. I can swipe my palette knife like this. I can use it up and down to get different marks. And I get a nice crisp edge or I can soften it. So the palette knife is great for some of this. It just works great. So I'm going to get just a little bit darker because I have memory of the scene, which is really nice reason to plain air paint. Not only do you have your plain air sketch and your photos, you also have the memory of the scene and remembering 
what was darker, what was lighter, um, the feeling of being outside uh, well, in the snow. Well, if you look at the reference photo, which we're showing now, you can't really see the color. You can't see the, you, you see bright spots, but you can't see the pinks and the yellows and the, and the shadows all kind of look like one color no. because that's what cameras do. And so this is a great a plein air painting really helps you see beyond what a photograph can see. I'm going to share a little bit of this color too, you know, so it's not all in just one spot. I'm going to just bring a little over and, you know, see what happens. Um, and when I do the sky sh uh, coming through up here, I'll throw a little bit of the sky down here because it's kind of reflecting. And why do you do so, that? It's, ref you know, the sky color is reflecting down into the snow too. So you get a little bit of that. Um, so I do have all these colors mixed, but as I'm painting, I like to adjust things because sometimes you can't, you can't tell exactly what it's going to look like. So I'm getting in, trying to get some energy into this too. I can always go over some of this, but I want some bigger marks towards the front here because your eye is going to kind of go back. It's like, I love pathways because it's like, what is down that path? What's around the corner, you know? So um, I have some bigger shapes in front here. And I think about this in shapes, okay? So, you know, the sketch is so nice because I have those shapes filled in. And now it's just the fun part of getting the paint down. So now I have some energy there with the strokes. And I'm going to move in. I'm going to try to paint as quick as I can so you guys can see. And I do paint really, really quick. Um, even outside, because the light will change. So you got to be quick. So now I have some of my shadow in there for this snowy path. And now I'm going to go into my light. And the great thing about palette knife is you can put paint on top of paint. So remember, I have my warms now that are hitting the snow, these shadows from the trees. They're making a beautiful pattern. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead. And I will leave, the reason I have that uh, stain color behind is I like kind of some of the vibration it gives you to have little bits of that peeking through. Yeah. So you'll see that I'll leave little bits of that. I'm not going to cover that all up, you know. Now it's thinner back here because they're going back in space. So some of these lines will be thinner. And as we get forward, they'll get a little bit thicker too. So they're coming across. And the I'm other not thing sure that, I, you know, that everybody should notice is that the minute you lay down that white, all that shadow color looks darker. Yes, that is very true too. Yep. And so, you know, you might have to adjust that. So that's the kind of thing where it's so nice to uh to be outside because you can really see your values and your color. Um, and you know, I might pump it up a little, you know, change it if I'm in the studio and do what looks good for the painting. So there was like some of these pinks too coming across. And these shapes right now, I'm not worried too much about um, exactly how they are. I'm, I can go back. This is kind of my first layer, so I can always uh, adjust later. All right. And I'm stepping back, you guys. So I know you can't see me, but as I'm painting, I could see you I stepping like to back. step back. You can? Yep. Uh, yeah. I like to step have, back because I have cam hard. cameras in your studio. Oh, oh, gosh. Don't see the messy studio. So I, uh, I'm getting these lights in and I'm going to get I'm stepping back to see the shapes because I want to make sure these are different and interesting enough, you know? And I can go back too with my with my blues after throwing palette knives around here, and I can uh, adjust things so I can, you know, with the knife I can go in later if I want. Oops, I you know I should have done a smaller. I can go in, but I do like some of that pink kind of vibrating there. So let's get um let's get some of this shadow and light all filled in here. I don't mind too if the paint mixes together a little. There's some edges that will be, uh, you know, 
really sharp, but then, you know, there's some that won't be. And you notice that when you observe shadows in the snow. So let's see. So I'm going to keep going. I'm using, you know, some whites have a little bit of orange in them. Some have um, a little bit of cad red. Some have alizarin. And I used, I like using alizarin, by the way, for my stain because it's a cool red. And in the winter, um, you know, I feel like that works really well with snow. But I did with the stain get a little oranger, a little more warmer with oranges up top. This is, I want to get a little bit bigger here. So the nice thing, if you look here, I can put with a real light touch paint on top of paint without disturbing what's underneath, which is really nice. And it's kind of like a dance. I can go back and forth with my lights and darks here, my shadow and light and be able to uh, adjust things, which is with a brush, it's harder because you kind of disturb what's underneath. And I also do paint with a brush. I don't only paint with a palette knife, but I find that it's just nice not to, you don't have to disturb what's underneath here. So I'm gonna come back to this because I, um, I want to jump to another part so you guys can see. So I'm going to move okay. quickly. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to come over to these trees and the light, um, the light hitting the trees. This side is a little bit lighter than this side. Even in the sketch, I did that to remind myself. So um, the light is hitting the trees here. And so this is a, a good time to hold the palette knife kind of up and down this way to get that that light on the side of the trees. And I also really like using these, uh, these tools because especially when um, the stain is a little wet too, you can pull things up, but I can get just by touching like that, some light on the, on the edge of those trees. So I'm gonna come in and cut around this tree with some darks. And you know, there there really isn't like a way that I normally do things. I mean, I, I kind of switch things up depending on where I want to move around the painting. Some people like to start with their darks. Um, but I kind of I, I kind of move around the painting here. So the light on the trees and now I'm going to go back to this. These are birch trees. So I love to use the light and shadow, warm and cool, to get those trees in. A little darker down here. And of course, I won't totally finish this and it doesn't look like much until you kill the background color. So what I'll do is get as far as I can seeing this and then I'll show you the finished painting after. So I'm just keeping this, uh, keeping it loose, getting some of these. Little bits of light are dancing around here. It's, it's so beautiful. I live uh, in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. So birch trees are um, a big thing and just love them. Me too, but yeah, I don't live there. But I visited and there. You've been you've been here, and you need to come back and do yeah. one of the. It was great when you guys were here. I think during the pandemic, uh, you did a um, fall. Yeah, yeah, we did fall, fall color week there. Yeah, and it snowed, right? <laughs> well, we we, we went up to the, the kind of the the point. The I don't know, you know, where where it was colder. Yeah, Crawford. Crawford, yeah. Yeah. And uh, our snow is kind of melting fast here right now. So. so I'm just kind of moving around, building this up, not sure exactly. Now this side 
is a little bit darker. There's still going to be light on the tree here, but this side's a little bit more lit up. And when I add some leaves and other stuff, I'll be covering some of this up. So I'm kind of showing you the process here, but you might not end up seeing all this later. All right. It's fine. So this is more gray on this side because it's not in the light. And I'm trying to kind of stay loose right now and not get detailed. I can um, later go back and clean things up, but you're starting to see some, you know, dynamic marks keeping it. If you guys loose. have questions, put them in the comment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, questions about uh, paints. Um, I like, I use Gamblin just because I feel like it, it really uh, moves well with the palette knife, but there's, I, you know, so many good paints out there. Um, and for the palette knife, I could post which palette knife I use. I really just stick to, I use this one even for really big paintings too, but I sometimes I'll start a painting just with this guy. This is a catalyst. Um, it's rubber. It's a it's a uh, very hard rubber. And sometimes for a really big one, I'll just start with that too. So yeah. you can pick up spatulas and all sorts of things to get, uh, you know, color and down. Really anything. So the stuff I'm doing now is just there's trees behind this. So there will be there was some some green leaves because this was kind of early winter snow. But right now I'm just getting some of this background stuff in um just some grays because grays you guys are really important if you have all color 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 in a painting um you know it's color is great i'm a colorist i love color but you need to balance it and i'm moving around and putting some uh darks you'll see that there are a lot of darks here I'm going to be putting more darks around this path because things are cutting in and I'm, I'm designing this painting. So again, I was outside, but I, um, I'm changing it up. Maybe, you know, it's not exactly uh, what I saw and I want to have the painting work compositionally. So it's really important. So I'm keeping some darks in. And I'm going to, just to move around, jump to some greens too, because I have a feeling of trees. I have a feeling of some light in the pathway and I might come along here. It's important with a palette knife too, to have not have all your marks going the same way. You know, you wanna have variety. So let me bring in some of the sky because the sky was peeking in over here. And I used for my sky, a little phthalo blue with white and even a, a little bit of cad yellow, I think, in there. And I'll bring some of this down into the snow as well. But this, these are going to be tree holes. So again, I'll change this up a little bit. I want to get these in. And there was one of the things about this painting where I want your eye to go is there was this light. And notice this is not right in the center. Um, there was light back here and it was so bright uh, that it was um, orange. It was orange back there and that's the great part of using uh, some of this background color. I can, I can leave some of this in. There was this bright light back here. So I'm mixing a little bit of cad red too in with my orange. And I don't want to forget about this because this was like what's ahead there on that path, you know, that feeling. You see how I'm turning going up this way? I have a little bit of purple in there too because it's not not all the same. That broken color. You know, there's So we're starting to get the feel I mean, I know what it looks like, you guys don't, but of this snowy path in the woods. And again, until I get more of this covered and get those greens in, but I did want to show you, show you this.
Okay, jumping ahead, I mix some greens. And greens, I don't use out of the tube. Um, I use uh, my blues and yellows. And um, I use a very limited palette of paint. I'm gonna start with some darks. Um, so different blues and different yellows to get my greens. I don't I don't use green out of the tube. Now the green, it was a little darker again on this side. And I, as I'm painting, I say that to myself, like, where's the light? Where's the, where's the dark? And there was also this great shape back here, like a tree. And I, I remember this stuff because again, I was standing there in the cold for a few hours. So you get I that. I you said you painted memory. quick. How, 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 yeah, how long, I do. Why were you there a few hours? Uh, I usually set up for like two hours to paint, okay. to do a to do a twelve by sixteen. Yeah, so I'm not paint. If I go, if I wanted to go really small, it doesn't work well for the palette knife as much to go small. But uh, usually, I can get it done completely done in two hours. To you know, right. two, the three no more than three because then the light changes. So you have to get it done, as you know, Eric, from being outside. Monet says and, the light uh, changes every seven minutes. Yeah. Yep. So that's why the sketch is so important and to kind of stick with your idea. So if the shadows change, you know, you can change it or not, you know, try to stick with what you started if you're at the beginning. But when you see something really good, you know, add it in. So, you know, I'm starting darker, but I'll show you. Then I can get the lighter on top and these these um little marks just on the tip of the palette knife here you can get these little marks normally i would save that for later but oh, just you want to show. show you exactly and um you know it's just fun to paint like this because you have all these marks and you um you can always go over them if something doesn't work so it's it's really Really fun. Melanie, so why don't you take a quick break and then give yourself a yeah. get yourself a glass of water and I'll bring you awesome. right back. Okay. okay, I'll see you. All right. Our guest today is Melanie Levitt. She's a gallery owner and a painter and a fine, fine painter. Uh, thank you for joining. If you painted late late, I mean if you joined us late, um uh <laughs> if you joined us late, it's because um you're late. I lost my train of thought. Okay. Well, what I was going to say is that we're painting palette knife in the snow. All right. Terrific. So uh, tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow is a big day because we have a worldwide audience gathering. We have, uh, I think, 30, 29, 30 countries signed up all over the world coming to us tomorrow on Plein Air Live. We have about 24 top, top masters. This is the best lineup ever. Uh, for Plen Air Live. It is our online conference and you can still get in. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to just show you this right now. It has made the difference in my world. I get invigorated. Today was just fantastic. I love it. It's just brilliant. I mark it off on my calendar. It was amazing. I need the community. I always wanted to go to art school. I feel like this could be it. The amount of value that is delivered is incomparable. When I did your first plein air live, I was only breaking into plein air and that just opened up my world. Every day I say, this is the best day. And again, it's another best day. <laughs> I'm taking notes, I'm watching what people are doing. I really am very grateful for the opportunity to just look over the shoulders of these great artists. It has taught me not only better plein air, it has made me a better studio painter as well. 
you know, the lineup is just so amazing. Thank you for introducing all these wonderful new artists to me. Everyone you have on here is fabulous. You learn something from every single teacher every single time, and it's just brilliant. This has made the last three years really bearable. Somebody like me really can't get to a convention. You know, this is really special. I need people to paint with, even though we're not all physically together. But then the relationships that are formed, I think that's what's really long lasting. It's just really fun to, to see people that you've, you become friends with, you know, throughout the years. There's always something to learn, no matter how many years you've been painting, or if, if you're a very beginner. It has exceeded my expectations and I've already signed up for next year. This is my second year and I definitely signed up for next year. This is my fifth live event. I was so happy. I went for it. You know, this is really special. So why I go? Why bother? Um, well, as, as Melanie pointed out, if you plein air paint, you see light and color differently. You see shape differently. Getting outdoors makes you a better painter. And now you say, why would I ever bother with going outdoors to paint? Well, because of that, because all of a sudden your paintings will come alive. It takes some time. Got to learn it. Um, and it's a whole lot of fun. It's very social. You meet a lot of people. You can travel together and paint. You got people you can go painting with. You know, then you're not isolated in the studio the whole time. So really, this is today's your last chance to get in on Plein Air Live. Tomorrow, we begin Plein Air Live Essentials Day, which is kind of drilling down to the basics. And a lot of people attend it no matter what, because it's a good refresher and reminder, but it's also great for beginners. You can attend just the Essential Techniques Day. Or you can attend the whole four days, right? Three days plus the essential day. And that's what most people do. And we love having you there. I'll be hosting and we have people teaching from all over the world and people attending from all over the world. So that is starting tomorrow. That's Plen Air Live. Okay, now we're going to get back to snow painting. Here we go. Hey, Take guys, it away, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, so definitely getting out. I'm so excited for it. The planar convention too and getting outside and painting is awesome so shout out for that it's a great event um yeah, that's so right you're that, coming to the planar yeah convention. i'm coming have you I been am, before yeah. i have i uh had to miss last year but i was out um out west uh for the um one in new mexico and it was it was awesome just such a great time met so many amazing people and helped beginners in the field, which I'll be doing again. So really. Well, the one in New Mexico crazy. was the biggest ever, and it's looking like this one's going to beat that in terms of attendance. Wow. Well, I have some, I have some friends coming, some new people who have never been before. So um, I'm really excited to meet new people and, uh, and, you know, see some old ones and, and to help people outside. I love teaching beginners and uh, that's kind of my specialty. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah. So back to this, I'm just, you know, this is, I'm just building up here, getting, uh, getting the color down. And again, until I, um, until I cover a lot of this canvas here, and this, this color, it's, it's hard to see, but I like to move around, not stick in one place, uh, move around, add color, different places, lights to dark. So I'm thinking about all of that, not just uh, randomly putting things down as I go here. And I'm thinking about, uh, you know, this pathway and with the head too. So I try to, when I'm painting inside like this, because I am a plain air painter, I it's try very, to remember. It's very believable, by the way. Oh, good. I'm glad. And I will get as far as I can. And then, of course, uh, you can see the finished painting after. We'll make sure to put that up. But um, this is a special place that I like to walk and uh, I like to paint things that 
you know, I like and that I have that connection to. So it's important to find, you know, something you like to paint rather than just set up anywhere, really walking around the spot or going back to a place where it means something to you, you know? And I just, I don't know, I'm on this thing with pathways right now. All right. Well, um, I've been painting roads it. in in a lot of my paintings. And I thought, well, that's my name. I guess I should paint them. <laughs> I love it. Hey, yeah, would you talk, would yeah. you explain a little bit about composition? Yeah. Uh, use this yeah. painting as an example to teach us a composition yeah. lesson. Yeah. So like for this one, um, you know, I did have this word. I didn't want to put it right in the center. So if you can see, uh, and when it's done, you'll be able to see more kind of one tree starts here, one starts down there. If you were to split this canvas, you know, into four parts, you know, uh, where where do you want that center? I don't want, you know, this right in the middle, but I do want to bring your eye around. So these marks are really important. And if you notice, I'm having the trees, which they were leaning in a little and branches coming in. Um, so that it pulls you into the painting. I can definitely have some things going off, but I'm trying to keep people in the painting. Uh, these corner areas don't matter that much. You know, you don't want to put something detailed in a corner. I want to keep you in here, you know. You don't want to draw painting. attention to the corners. Yeah, not too much, no. And the I other mean, thing know, that, are, that you've yeah. done here is is something that I learned from Eric Koppel, who's one of your friends and neighbors. Oh, uh, yes. And and that is that he creates, he likes to create what he calls a portal, right? Because yes. you've got that yep. portal down there, that spot of light where it's like, I wonder what's down there. I want to go there. Yes. Yeah. And that, that is very true. And I, I think about that when I was looking at this because there was this light. Yeah. So compositionally, you know, I want people to stay in the painting and move around um, with the palette knife. You can control too. Um, you know, thicker areas of paint and um, where you want, you know, thinner areas because thicker areas people will, will kind of look at too. And I can get really small marks. So sometimes I would do this, you know, later, uh, just using the tip like this, just to get some small marks in the painting because um, I want that light here. And uh, so I want to bring the viewer down there and then. You know, a lot of this stuff in the background here is going to be, there's stuff going on, trees behind. So, you know, as long as I have some areas uh, that you can, you know, see the tree popping forward and, um, and, you know, see certain marks, a lot of it is very abstract. If you were to zoom in on part of this, it would really look like an abstract painting. Um, oh, it's very abstract. And I, yeah, and I like that. Um, so I'm going to bring, I don't know how much time we have, but a little more. You have plenty of time. Oh, good. I, I know. I, I do tend to paint fast and I mix the colors in advance. If, you, if I didn't have the color, you know, you have to spend a lot of time. So I'm going to keep building this up with these sky holes. Well, I, I think what we might do, sometimes I like to do experiments and this might be a good day to do an experiment. So maybe... Maybe get it as far as you think you can take it, and then I'll give you an idea, and we'll see if if you like that idea or if it comes out really badly. Oh, you God, guys want her to do an experiment? Uh, <laughs> just put something in the in the comments. You're Got brave. It. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, you have to be brave. Good point. Well, there's no pressure. There's it's only going to be hundreds of thousands of people seeing this. <laughs> So funny. Well, you know, the nice thing is um, I do find painting most of the time relaxing. Sometimes it's a little battle, but, you know, most of the time, I don't know about you, but you get into like a meditative state. Yeah. You just kind of go for it. So it's starting to build up. You know, one thing that I notice here is I want to rework, you know, some of these, some of these um, light and shadows just to be more interesting shapes and a little bit bigger here. So, you know, you can, um, if you have a lot of paint too, you can scrape down some areas um, and get smoother. So I'm just like picking up paint, wiping it on my paper towel. And then the other thing is, as I go, use this other one, I can, um, I can use these 
shaper tools to pick up paint too and get edges. So kind okay. of surprising in here. Folks in the comments, how many people have never tried doing a full palette knife painting and are going to do it? So put a yes in there. I'm going to do it. Awesome. Yeah, and if you're coming we'll to the put, convention. We'll, by the way, put Melanie's website where you can find her workshops, et cetera. And, of course, she's going to be working in the in the field as a coach at the plein air convention. So what was that experience like for you the first time? Because did you did you come yeah. not knowing anybody? Did you know a few people? What was that for you? You know, I knew uh, I knew a few people, but honestly, like uh, met a lot, like was setting up kind of helping someone and had a great conversation and met Haiti Joe Summers, whose work I absolutely love. And she's just such a lovely person. Um, I got to uh, talk to Mark Sasha because we hadn't met and I was trying to get him up here to teach. So I want to catch up with him. So there's a, I met a lot of new people, people who I had, you know, known from being friends on maybe social media, but hadn't met in person. And then just meeting people who were totally new to the experience uh, there was, was so fun. So um, I can't say enough about it, just bringing all those people together in one spot. And uh, so what would you say to somebody who's like, well, I'm not a good enough painter. I'm a little embarrassed to paint in front of other people. I don't know anybody. What would you say to them? I would say this is the place to go and not be, not feel that way because where we all, first of all, I tell this to my students, you have to start somewhere. And it is a really safe environment to be there because there are, there's so much support and there's people of all levels, but you are going to get help from the professionals, first of all, and you're also going to get, you know, the experience of painting with, gosh, how many people are coming this year, Eric? It's, it's a huge amount. Uh, oh, you're yeah. going to... Hard to know yet, yeah, but it's, it's a lot. You're going to, yeah, you're going to get the experience of painting with, a lot of different people in a very, very supportive, fun environment. There is no, you know, I don't know how to say it, but there's, everyone is at their level and there's just a lot of camaraderie and, uh, and fun spirit. And I think that's, you guys just do such a great job. And it's, it's also well organized, I think too. So people know where to be. Uh, the demos on stage, there's so many going on at once, um, which is great. You can jump around. Um, and everyone getting out and painting together in the afternoon is just, I think, magical. And I'm really excited to see those Smoky Mountains this year. So um, I think it's going to be great. Uh, and well, we're going to paint the Biltmore Hotel, our, the great Biltmore Estate, too, which is going to be cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. The yeah. last day. Everybody needs to hang around for that last full day of painting because that's going to be spectacular. Yeah, I'm going to stay on after. So, yeah, I'm very excited. Oh, and Kathy Odom. I met Kathy and Buddy at the convention. You're going to meet all these amazing painters who, you know, you've seen either videos on or heard about. And they are just so friendly. Um, and all the staff at the convention um, was just awesome and friendly. So it's just, it's something I'm, I'm looking forward to. And I urge total beginners to go and experience it and learn so much. So that's my take. So I'm starting to get the canvas covered. Yay, I didn't know how far I'd get. Um, you know, and this is not gonna be a finished painting because I'm gonna just have to stand back and look at it. But the main thing is once you get your, your canvas covered enough of it, um, I'm gonna keep again some of that, uh, that background orangey color, but not all of it, um, I can start to see what's going on here. And there's all this foliage mixed with, you know, kind of dead grayish uh, branches and stuff. So you don't have to paint every single one. It's an impressionist painting. So you got to kind of stand back and everyone's always amazed. It's like, oh, I thought you had a lot more in there, but you, you know, put the right strokes in the right place and it kind of makes sense so all right you ready for your challenge yeah i'm ready <laughs> are you re are you sure uh no but i'll take i'll i'll okay. tell you <laughs> all right here's, yeah, here's sure. what i want you to do i uh, just just because i think this would be a great lesson for everybody now that light coming from the right 
the 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 right. light coming from the right. Just imagine all of a sudden it's golden hour. It's yeah. you know right before that two minutes before sunset. You got that brilliant gold color. What? How would you change this painting? Oh gosh. Well, so you're saying the sky it would kind of turn orange at that golden hour almost, right? Well, maybe and, part of it would, and or you've kind of got the golden hour at the end of the painting anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you can't affect there. the sky, but would you would you yellow up that snow more? Would you put it? Yeah, uh, you could get some more. Um, you could get some more of this like orangey tones and warmer in it. You could do that. And uh, you know, I have been at this area during. Um, when the sun is kind of setting, I think because it was, this was in the woods, I didn't see this area, but um, yeah, you could get some of this. So really just, a, you just going. need a couple spots here and here and there, maybe a yeah. spot on that tree and that front tree to give it, you know, that sense of, yeah. Wow. What a difference it makes. Just a little thing like that. And actually like that is the stuff I do at the end anyway. Like I'll take, you know, some ran some color that's a surprise, you know, um, and, and use it that way anyway. So that's a really good, good thing. And the thing with these birch trees is they, you know, reflect it because they're white, but they're not really, you get so much color in them. So towards the end, you know, there's some, you know, greens and different, different colors in these trees and the grays too, that you would you explain to people left. why you were focused more on putting light on the trees on the right and less on the trees on yeah. the left? Yep. So again, I'm working from direct observation. So the light, the right side here and the leaves were more in the light and lit up. So that was kind of sparkling, whereas the shadow was here. So, you know, it's so easy to, as you're, as you were saying, it's so easy to forget that because things change, but it's important part of the painting because I'm trying to capture, you know, light and shadow. So that was, that's one of the things that I love in a landscape is that you, is that you get, you know, light and color. So it's really important that um, when I saw this, the light was more here and the shadow was more here. So I'm making this darker, cooler, um, all those things. And then I'm bringing some of these, you know, light marks here. And, you know, well, you I, also, yeah. if, if you had the whole painting in light, it wouldn't be as interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. That, that is absolutely it. You definitely, if you have everything light, right, then it becomes boring. So you want to balance light and dark. And, uh, and so, yes, that is definitely true. No. For sure. Do you ever put figures in a painting like this? That is so funny that you say that because um, this scene, I have a photo of my husband and dog walking. And that is the next step is I'm going to do, a, I'm going to do another version of this with uh, my husband and dog kind of walking off down this path. And I have the photo. So one, one thing I think goals, is confusing, maybe you could at least talk about is, uh, I think people tend to put their figures too high or too low and yep. it may, maybe without having to actually paint on it, you could just kind of talk, talk us through where would you put the figure in this and how would yep. you know it's the right perspective? So, yeah, you got to get the size of the figure, right? And um, I actually um, will take, will do some sketches and take a photo of the finished painting even and, get uh, my marker and move and, you know, do different sketches to get the figure in different spots. How big is it? Like if you're down this path, is it going to be, you know, two inches, one inch, if it's here, it's going to be bigger because it's perspective. So it's like, you know, where, where the figure is placed, I think will be uh, a lot of before just jumping into the painting, you know, go into, uh, go into the, sketch and work and their work eye level out. their eye level is at your eye level is that right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's one thing one people looking, get wrong yeah. is that you you have to kind of look yeah. at where where is your actual eye level not your horizon but your eye level and then yep. the tops yep. of the heads or the eyeballs would basically be roughly in that same line right right 
Yeah, and I that's yeah, that's very interesting to me is taking um especially this scene and how does how does that work adding a uh, figure to it? So that's great that you said that cuz I I want to do that. So as I'm kind of going through this, I'm going through kind of scanning and I can get like a little bit smaller as I go with some of my marks and filling in and I can start to look at some of these light areas and decide what to cover up to make things you know more interesting there's when you're when you have trees and branches there's um they're covering you know they're covering some of the the trees and some are showing so i can start to look and get a little more detailed with the palette knife of you know what i want to show and what i don't and it's so easy to you know, to add and take away. So I can put, I can load up if I have a branch coming across here, you know, I can load up and get just on the edge here. And branches also come down too. They don't only come up. So, you know, I can skim the surface and just get some really light, light marks too. And that's one of the reasons I, I love the knife. So this, and again, I'm really important to keep standing back to see what it looks like. I'm carving in on edges, you know, turning the knife different ways. There's so much you can do with this tool without uh, disturbing. And I can also, you know, soften edges. So like, if I don't want the whole thing in focus, I can skim the surface with this. So you want to think about, you know, your edges too, which ones, which ones are harder, which ones are softer, um, and how to work that. So I know I said, I'm not not to use complete white paint, but I'm going to use white, white as a color is or it's not a color absence color is cool right so there uh if you use white alone and i can show you it's going to be cool but it can also just pop some areas and mix with a little yellow is even better but just using a little bit there and i'm going to mix a little bit of white with a little bit of cad yellow medium just to get a little bit of a All right. warmer white We're going to bring this in for a landing in about two minutes. Awesome. And there's going to be, you know, a little bits of snow too. Up in these areas. So at this point in the painting, what I'll do when I'm done here is I will, you know, stand back, look at it, walk away a little bit and try to see, you know, what needs to be done. I can also, not add paint and this is going to be a little bit out of focus here so i can bring some of these uh leaves or dead trees or whatever's going on back here over the sky holes because you want the sky holes kind of to be placed in a good spot but i want this to feel like a you know sunny winter day and that is uh my goal And then little things like putting the spots on the birch trees, you know, birch trees have those birch markings that that's kind of done more towards the end too. I don't like that those two are the same shape, but you know, just a suggestion of that there's a marking there to know that that's a birch tree. Yeah. Well, it's very convincing. You know, little things like that you can, you know, do towards the end. Awesome. And these branches come in and out of, you know, in and out. So they might, you know, when you're outside, you catch like a glimpse of a little bit of light. And then and even in this shadow part can be little bits of that. I can pick up some of this orange and have. So as you get more into the painting is when you can get smaller, just like you would with a brush.
Cool. Well, why don't you come back on camera so we can see you and thank you. Yes. Let's make sure there's no paint all over my face. <laughs> well, we, we all have paint all over our face all the time. So it's perfectly. Here I am. <laughs> oh, look, Terrific. I do have paint in my hair. So yeah. Well, you got a, a nice rack for all your paintings. That's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So I have, I had someone kind of build this so I can put uh, work on there that's in process. Some is already framed and um, yeah. So here's, a quick tour of the messy studio, but wow, it's pretty is, big. Uh, what are what are those round things in the back? It looked like round mirrors. Oh, you know what those are? Those are mirrors that my kids put up when this was a playroom, and they're glued to the wall, and they can't come down, so they stayed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. Kids aren't at home anymore. Actually, uh, my daughter that was in New York as a fashion designer is home temporarily, living here, working remotely. And my other daughter from college is home. So we went from empty nest to full nest. So we have oh, to nice. mask temporarily. Yeah, well, so it is really nice. It is really as far as I'm concerned, that's always nice. I like having kids around. It is. And I love having seeing your kids in the Adirondacks. They're awesome. Yeah. So. And you're going to see them at the plein air convention as well. So. Oh, great. That's so great. Thank yeah, you so well, much uh, for having me on, Eric, too, with the, uh, with the palette knife. And I'm really excited to answer any questions. So. Thank you, Melanie. Well, uh, we're going to put all of your contact information, website, et cetera, into the comments section. And thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. See you soon, Eric. Okay. See you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Well, that was outstanding. I love that. I get so inspired by palette knife paintings. And one of the things that somebody told me is when they started palette knife painting, everything sold better. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Uh, anyway. Even if you guys don't believe you can do it, you can do it. You can learn. And, um, you know, when I started out, I couldn't draw a stick figure. I couldn't paint. My pa paintings were a disaster. I quit several times. Uh, I almost gave up forever. I had a lot of bad teachers. And finally, I found somebody who could really teach me. And once I got it down, I got so inspired. I started Plein Air Magazine. I started Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine. I've got like five newsletters. Uh, we just do a lot of stuff. And my goal is to help people learn to paint, to simplify it, to let you know no talent is required. My goal is to help everybody learn to paint that wants to paint and help you live your dream as an artist, whether you want to do it professionally or, or just as a hobby, but we want to make you better. So we have literally hundreds. We have, I think, about 600 art instruction videos that are professionally produced at painttube.tv. And... Uh, you know, super high quality. What you see on this show are typically, you know, people using their phones. It's not the same. We go into depth. You know, sometimes these videos are really long and really in depth, but you really get a lot out of it. We're going to see Melanie at the Plein Air Convention, and, and we hope that you'll join us there. And most going on tomorrow, uh, most importantly for the this week is Plein Air Live, and you still can sign up for Essential Techniques Day, which starts tomorrow, or the whole thing, just go to Plein Air live.com. I'll be hosting. I'd love to have you. Thanks again for watching and thanks again to Melody. Take care.